Hello, I'm Mary Sue Sweeney Price, director of the Newark Museum, and it's my pleasure to invite you to come to the museum to see the most recent of our centennial commissions. This commission is a film tribute, a love story, if you will, to the city of Newark called New Work. I'm Mary Lou Tibaldo Bongiorno, I'm a filmmaker, I live in Newark, and my husband Jerome Bongiorno and I are here on the 28th floor of this beautiful building, 744 Broad Street in Newark, with 360 degree views of the city, and it's spectacular. Okay, my name is Jerome Bongiorno, I am known as Mary Lou's husband, and uh, I'm a cinematographer for a project we're doing uh, for the Newark Museum called uh, New Work. It's a uh, project that looks at Newark in 3D. I'm Beth Venn. I'm curator of modern and contemporary art and senior curator of the Department of American Art at the Newark Museum. Mary Lou and Jerome were very much inspired by the movie Manhattan that was filmed in 1920 in Manhattan, which was intended to be a kind of art film that would look at Manhattan from sunup to sundown. And they looked at this film and the way that it really celebrated Manhattan at that time, and they wanted to do a similar thing for present-day Newark. I've lived in Newark my entire life, and Jerome and I have been here many years. So we've always thought that there was, there was a Newark that had to be captured, and it should be done sooner than later. And it was time to do it now because it was a centennial year and we thought it was perfect timing to make the carlet between a film that's already in the collection, Manhattan, and what we were creating. Manhattan was a film that was done in 1920 in Manhattan by two artists, Paul Strand and Charles Sheeler. Both of the artists were photographers, although Charles Sheeler also did a considerable amount of painting, and they came to Manhattan wanting to really explore the industrial sublime. It was a time in the early 20th century when artists really were turning away from an interest in landscape toward an interest in industry, an interest in the city. It's a time when artists were looking at these major cities being built and really thinking about industry and new technologies having more to do with transportation and building and construction. And they were really looking at this and seeing it as the new religion of this country. The very first time I saw Manhattan was in a museum. And certainly the Newark Museum is one of the first times, or certainly probably the most times I've rewatched it. Um, it was astounding because that film is a work of art in almost every image. You know, it's, it's, it's almost moving stills because there's very little motion by the camera. And what I pick up on the mo movie the most is the real chunky compositions, the real great um, ability to have a lot of light space that is balanced by just as much dark space. And, you know, that's really difficult. Once you go out and you start to shoot or try to mimic something like this, you realize how much work, energy, and creativity went into capturing those images. As you're looking out at Newark from a high level, this is the 28th floor, you see old Newark very visibly, but there's also the very definite presence of new Newark. So with the glass and steel of the new buildings, you have those juxtaposed against these gorgeous carved structures and brick of uh, the deco that have been here for over a hundred years. One of the images that we took um, from the vantage of 744 brought a high angle shot is includes the Manhattan skyline and I think it's a nice nod to Manhattan but I also see it as a distinction between two great cities. When we were filming at, at Port Newark, and we were at a very high angle, we saw tugboats come, and we thought, they're still here doing that job. And it was immediate uh, recognition of the shots in Manhattan that had the steam of those tugboats and the mammoth job that they're doing. But it's still happening today, which you would think somehow technologically we wouldn't need that. 
And Strand and Sheila use that, obviously, as a metaphor for New York uh, itself. I mean, they really obsess over how those lots of little boats are pushing this huge mammoth thing. It's a lot of, you know, little people building big, big things. And a lot of these big things add up to a city. How do you capture a city? That's what Jerome and I struggle with. Do we want this high angle, abstract view and looking at details and how are you capturing people as part of the city or are you capturing the city itself as this living force? Because of the 3D, you get a sense of the topography of Newark and it's not something you can get if you went up into a helicopter to look because your, your eyes are only, you know, two and a half inches apart or three inches. Our cameras were 16 feet apart, so it's something you could never, ever get to see unless you take this kind of picture. I think what's so wonderful about the installation of this project, the actual presentation of the film, is you'll see this film projected on a wall, full height and full width of the wall. So it's nearly 20 by 20 feet or something that approximates that. And, and why that's important is that you're going to walk into this space and you're going to see a 3D rendition of cars moving along Broad Street and Market, and you're going to feel like you could just keep walking and head right into that picture. You know what's exciting about it is when you actually put the footage together and you're like, wow, you know, because you don't see that image, you know, with your own eyes. You can only see it. With, you know, with a very far stereo base. Your eyes would have to be 16 feet apart. You know, that's the eyes of God. Uh, you know, we don't have eyes that far apart, so you can't see that image without doing this kind of work. What I'm seeing in new work is innovation. I haven't seen any city captured in this type of cinematography in a 3D format, and that's exciting. People are going to see this film, and they are going to think... There is such beauty, there's such elegance in the architecture here, there's such vibrancy in what's going on in terms of the transportation hubs and the port and the airport, and it's, it's a dynamic, exciting, and very, very beautiful place. And the Bongiornos have really worked hard and have thought hard about the idea of 100 years. What does it mean to look back on aspects of the city that have been around for a hundred years. It's extraordinary, really. What started with uh, two photographers in 1920 being inspired by the poetry of Walt Whitman that came before them, and then deciding to create these visuals that became Manhattan, and then to have the two of us, Newark artists, at this point in, you know, how many years later, deciding that this is a source of inspiration, and then asking Newark artists to look at all of these works combined, including what we're doing, and be inspired to create new work, is the essence of new work. Are you impressed yet? <laughs> I'm Mary Sue Price, and I invite you to visit this exhibition and all of the art and science exhibitions in the Newark Museum's 80 galleries. The Newark Museum, 100 years, always new. To learn more, visit us at newarkmuseum.org. The Newark Museum's centennial celebration is made possible through the generous support of Prudential. New work has been created with support from the Newark Museum Volunteer Organization, the Newark Museum Business and Community Council, and the Friends of American Art. Additionally, New Work has been sponsored by the Broadcast and Production Systems Division of Sony Electronics. <laughs>